my first language is Cree and my second language is English. So this is where my role is um, is connected with my, um, where I work today. As I, I work at Saskatchewan Indigenous Cultural Center as the education and language specialist. My role there is to support and serve, preserve, and revitalization of retention of Saskatchewan First Nations languages for the present and future generations. So we're always searching and finding ways to support and serve the language, speakers and educators through developing and creating new and old language resources and materials for um, language programs or anyone that wants to, any communities, First Nation people that want to revitalize their language, languages. We also create educational curriculums. So, and um, we just recently had um, a curriculum that was launched last year that was um, the land-based. And this here is the unique curriculum, and that's Teaching Sacred Language Curriculum. It is, it, um, it is based on First Nation ways of knowing laws through elders' guidance and knowledge. And we also implemented the Saskatchewan Provincial Curriculum. And with um, the other roles we do is we also provide various language um, workshops for um, where te we're reaching out to or they reach out to us is um, First Nations um, organizations from Head Start to high school to um, getting to, to know their language training, such as TPR training. So we've been doing that a few pro, um, places already. Yeah. And we also do, um, the, in our department, we also do a lot of um, volunteering work to other communities that um, say if they want to, um, they have their language workshop, cultural or language workshops. They asked us for any assistance from um, working with the elders or being um, home hosts. So it varies wherever they want us. Yeah. So the lang teaching sacred language, the reason why we call that is, um, well, first of all, our president, Wanda Wilson, from SICC, and uh, um, the elders council, and um, the leaders and community from communities from Saskatchewan have been asking or wanted um, help and guidance how we can revitalize um, our languages in, at homes and schools. So and so we got a group, a language group together, and they're from other communities, and we started creating this um, the language curriculum, and it's based on um, our ways of knowing. So staying away from well, majority of the Western thinking, and we also recognize that Saskatchewan provincial curriculum is is um, something that we need to put in there. So we, we included that. Um, the language curriculum is um, based on elders' guidance and um, growing up with um, our traditions and culture and our elders is we, we basically put that into the language curriculum. So um, putting the elders in front. So there are teachers, there are knowledge keepers. So we have a whole bunch of quotes here that actually came from elders from the past and today. So one of the ones that we looked at is um, because of the challenges we face in the Western settings or in Canada or wherever, is, um, we have to bring that back, our identity back. And if we don't know our identity, that's when we get lost. So what is identity? How, we go, how, how are we going to get it? So we need to, to know the, the importance of the spirit of the language and due to the residential school, um, that impacted a lot of First Nations um, people. So our elders are very, very sacred. Um, are very, they have very powerful knowledge. So we, um, when we bought them, we brought them first and also our experience with our grandparents. So something we thought, okay, we need to start embracing our children because those are very important in our education. The language starts from the womb and nurture 
love, we need to start seeing that in our children. And um, so something we always learn, not only the Cree, the Crees, but also Lakota and other groups believe, uh, not believe, strongly say that our children are loaned to us from the Creator. Our job is to love and nurture and respect and teach them our ways. So we brought that first because that's what our education should look at. And even as parents or family members, friends, that our children are very sacred. And if we bring that to in our, the environment, that's when the language nest grows and identity comes, our culture, our traditions. So we did that. Um, so um, we uh, talked about the language spirit is um, something that we, um, that the creator gave us to use to communicate. Uh, and um, the unique part is that every First Nation groups have their own languages and also their own dialect. So we had a, experienced a lot of dialect judgment and we strongly believe it came from the residential school and they say that um, an elder one said that um, the colonial or the western way is like a spirit that goes around in us, that lives in us and we have to get it out. And in order to do that is we have to know who we are. So everything is connected. So we talked about the language curriculum as a very sacred, of course it's not from us, it's from the elders and from what we have, what we, we grew up from. And um, the language comes from the womb. Um, we should start speaking to our children from, from the womb and then that's when they start um, exposing hearing. So it gives a lot, um, so our First Nation language gives more meaning, knowledge, and acceptance. And this is where our life journeys begin, because there's, there, um, our language starts with our stories, our, um, our ancestors, our protocols, and all of it is basically connected to, to the spirit, or to the creator. So we, what we did was instead of putting the provincial curriculums for um, outcomes first, we, we collected information from the elders from all the seven, the eight groups in Saskatchewan, and that is Dakota, Diné, Lakota, Nakoda, Plains Cree, Swampy Cree, Woodland Cree, and Soto. And each of them we um, asked, I said, why is it so important you, um, your First Nation group to learn their language and it is amazing what they they were able to share and what they wanted to why their children need to know this for the future and today so for example one of my favorite ones is no two-legged human gave us our language the creator gave it to us and that's from a Soto elder a Diné elder it is the gift from the creator our spirit our spiritual language, our mother tongue, and our identity. So um, that's a Diné elder. So we have the eight examples. And then we move on to um, our language curriculum also has um, a seasonal year plan. So it has fall, winter, spring, summer. So year plan, we decided we need to have a, a year plan for all the teachers because Language teachers, I've been a language, language teacher for a few years, and um, we, I kind of understand that what we need in that setting. And so we need to make it non-stressful and something easy for them because it is a lot of work when you teach a language in schools or in a community. So that's why we decided we're going to have a, a year plan for them, a set-up year plan. So the year plan... September consists on greetings, basic greetings, conversation, and that's with the commands. Uh, and, um, and there's also a thematic unit, and so every month has a thematic unit. For example, September has classroom and objects. So um, just because that is their first, the, the students see all these objects or um, the people in the classroom. So those are all, there's a list of target words, vocabulary there. And there's also TPR, total physical response, that, uh, that is um, teaching the verb base. 
and the as asla accelerate second language and what we did we gave an option is uh, orthography sro writing the written part is something that the elders suggest that can come later in life we have to get the student um, our people talking using oral and something that's been we've been using is a calendar numbers and colors and songs we kind of put that in the side and it's the most important is that communication so september starts from one word and then each month we add two or three and it becomes a a sentence form and they're all connected so every month has a virtue for example respect thankfulness what is respect and the community can explain what is thankful, why is it so important for us, what is our way. And we also, one thing we also included is um, July and August is because our language shouldn't end in June, begin in September and end in, end in June. It's supposed to keep going. So we, we did that and because now it's been um, actually recognized and it's been practiced as there's... Um, a lot of youth programs, cultural activities in the summer, so we can have those for them. So we implemented three methods, and that's accelerate the second language acquisition, total physical response, and of course that the written part. So we have three lesson plans, talk about how we can, how do we teach TPR or ASLA. And then, when, and then it goes back to um, daily unit plans. So September has... Um, has about 50 to 60 target words in English, but we can't give a number just because every language has their own their own um, translations. So we, we um, they they can provide their own translations, and then we also this book is um, we gave the English vocabulary just because they um, every community can translate using their own dialect. So dialect is a very important also, and um, it actually um, describes your identity or what community you came from. So we're so we're respecting all the dialects and languages in Saskatchewan. So every month has uh, the target words, and you can see there's um, sentences like buffaloes are drinking. And um, in September, there was uh, just one word, buffalo. So you'll see all of these are, um, they all have um, quotes from the elders. And so that's at the same time we're honoring, bringing back those elders, connecting back. And I forgot to mention, the language curriculum um, consists of stages of how to revitalize First Nation languages. So we, ha we just had provided seven examples that if they, somebody, if a community or a program wants to organize or start a, a language nest, um, this is something we um, researched and, and put it together. So we have that information for them. And um, something that's very common that we always um, get phone calls or requests is, um, is work, how are we going to work with the elders? What do we need to do? So we decided to put some um, steps what to expect when working with elders or requesting elders to come to your, to the, um, to your room or classroom or community. So and the other thing is we know that assessments are very important. So we have um, assessments at the back, and it's actually based on seasonal also. The, um, so September, there's a target words we have, and if you go, go to the end and you go to September, there's a check mark on um, the target words that are, are, are recommended to learn for the first month. And then there's um, rating scale included. So that goes all the way to June, and we also um, gave additional uh, words just in case if the, the students are mastering and, um, the whole book and the words. So, and again, like one community looked at the language curriculum and their community, their first language was Dene, so they're coming in. 
So this is really, really um, easy. So they can go jump into the month of December. So and we have we provided a few examples of assessments too. What is your understanding of indigenous education? Well, um, our indigenous education has always been there, and they uh, we have our own ways of learning, our own system, and um, we have our ways to transmit first na uh, traditional law knowledge, our own laws, and um, that's. And the most important thing is, um, is that connection with the creator. The creator created the laws and the education for us to use. And, um, and that's something that we are, the way we, we know or educate ourselves is, is, um, is something that's very vital to us. Um, uh, my grandma used to say, um, if we don't know who you are, you don't know your laws, the education, you will be lost. And I strong, strongly believe that. I see it today. I understand it today. And uh, we've been showered with the Western education. And, for example, for me, and it was so hard to relate to, but once working with, say, for example, SICC, working with them, that's where my education started coming back is something I was my, my grandmother or the elders talked about. We have our own way of understanding with Mother Earth, understanding the protocols. Protocols is the connection, creating with, I mean, connecting with the creator and discipline, respect. So everything we do is um, in, in a holistic approach is our education. It will find its ways to get out of um, the challenges, the tools, and the understanding of the world. And that's what we, I believe that our education, our indigenous education, is a very spiritual, powerful, and unique way of learning. Is bringing back all the traditions, culture, language, and our identity so we can walk and say, I'm First Nation, I'm Cree. My first language is Cree, and be able to um, read in Cree or the language, communicate. That's indigenous education. Do you do you have a vision like of how you would like to see it evolve in the next ten years? My vision. I thought about that all day today. Is that what is the vision? When in my younger years listening to the elders, my grandma, they talked about what the future holds for our generation. That was, that was me when I was young. But um, it's losing the language, lo losing our ways, our culture, traditions, and because we would be so in, in, um, in, implanted with the cultural views. But because we cannot relate or fit in there, he said we're going to find our ways to come back. And um, and because we all need to feel a belonging, uh, and and um, that's where we belong. That's what the uh, our Creator put us here for a reason. And um, today I see there has been a huge improvement. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done, but we um, First Nation people are and the elders using, or for example, this program, are, are coming out, we're, we're, we're voicing our, who are First Nation people. And I think, I believe that's when our identity comes. Our, um, our virtues, our respect for our land, our, our families, communities will reunite. And um, for the future generations, I know that we wouldn't, we won't go back um, to where it used to be, but there will be some connections.